page 34, section entitled Relationships. We need to write about our relationships in the fourth step, all of our relationships, not just the romantic ones, so we can find out where our choices, beliefs, and behaviors have resulted in unhealthy or destructive relationships. We need to look at our relationships with relatives, spouses or partners, friends and former friends, co-workers and former co-workers, neighbors, people from school, people from clubs and civic organizations, and the organizations themselves, authority figures such as police, institutions, and anyone or anything else we can possibly think of. We should also examine our relationship with a higher power. We may be tempted to skip the relationships that didn't last long, a one-night sexual involvement, for instance, or perhaps an argument with a teacher whose class we then dropped. But these relationships are important, too. If we think of it or have feelings about it, it's inventory material. Questions. Page 37. What conflicts in my personality make it difficult for me to maintain friendships and or romantic relationships? How has my fear of being hurt affected my friendships and romantic relationships? How have I sacrificed platonic friendships in favor of romantic relationships? In what, what ways did I compulsively seek relationships? In my relationships with family, do I sometimes feel as though we're locked into repeating the same patterns over and over without any hope of change? What are those patterns? What is my part in perpetuating them? How have I avoided intimacy intimacy with my friends, partners, or spouses, and family? Have I had problems making commitments? Describe. Have I ever destroyed a relationship because I believed I was going to get hurt anyway so I should get out before that could happen? Describe. To what degree do I consider the feelings of others in my relationships? Equal to my own? More important than my own? Of minor importance? Not at all? Have I felt like a victim in any of my relationships? Note, this question is focused on uncovering how we set ourselves up to be victims or how too high expectations contributed to our being disappointed in people, not on listing instances where we were actually abused. Describe. What have my relationships with my neighbors been like? Do I notice any patterns appearing that carried through no matter where I lived? How do I feel about the people with and for whom I've worked? How, do my, how have my thinking, beliefs, and behavior caused problems for me at work? How do I feel about people I went to school with, both in childhood and currently? Did I feel less than or better than the other students? Did I believe I had to compete for attention from the instructor? Did I respect authority figures or rebel against them? Have I ever joined any clubs or membership organizations? Hint. NA is a membership organization. How did I feel about the other people in the club or organization? Have I made friends in these organizations? Have I joined clubs with high expectations only to quit in a short time? What were my expectations and what, why weren't they fulfilled? What was my part in these situations? Page 38. Have I ever been in a mental hospital or prison or otherwise been held against my will? What effect has that had on my personality? What were my interactions with the authorities like? Did I follow the rules? Did I ever break the rules and then resent the authorities when I got caught? Did early experiences with trust and intimacy hurt me and cause me to withdraw? Describe. Have I ever let a relationship go, even when the potential existed to resolve conflicts and work through problems? Why? Did I become a different person depending on who I was around? Describe. Have I discovered things about my personality, perhaps in previous inventories, that I didn't like and then found myself overcompensating for that behavior? For instance, we may have uncovered a pattern of immature dependence on others and then overcompensated for this by becoming overly self-sufficient. Describe. What defects are most often at play in my relationships? Dishonesty, selfishness, control, manipulation, etc.? How can I change my behavior so that I can begin having healthy relationships? Have I tried any kind of a relationship with a higher power? How has this changed in my lifetime? What kind of relationship do I have with my higher power now? Next section entitled Sex. This is a very comfortable area for most of us. In fact, we may be tempted to stop here thinking, okay, this has gone far enough. There's no way I'm cataloging my sexual behavior. But we have to get over such unwillingness quickly. Thinking about the reason why we need to do this should help. 
As it says in It Works How and Why, we want to be at peace with our own sexuality. That's why we need to include our sexual beliefs and behaviors in our inventories. It's important to remind ourselves at this point that we are not taking our inventory to compare ourselves with what we think is normal for others, but only to identify our own values, principles, and morals. Questions. How, has my, how was my sexual behavior based in selfishness? Have I confused sex with love? What were the results of acting on that conclusion? Confusion. How have I used sex to try to avoid loneliness or, or fill a spiritual void? In what ways did I compulsively seek or avoid sex? Have any of my sexual practices left me feeling ashamed and guilty? What were they? Why did I feel that way? Have any of my sexual practices hurt myself or others? Am I comfortable with my sexuality? If not, why not? Am I comfortable with other sexuality? If not, why not? Page 39. Is sex a prerequisite in all, all or most of my relationships? What does a healthy relationship mean to me?